Omar. Uh, Omar, since I saw you last in Detroit, now you've been to California and you saw the picture being put together. Tell yes. us a little bit about I that. Went, I went to the studio. I was very excited because we hadn't seen, no one had seen anything of this picture. So I was very impatient to go and watch David while he was cutting the film and putting it together. That's David uh, Lean. You better David Lean, yes. And it's a very exciting thing because when you're shooting a film, you do the things, you know, you're engrossed with what you're doing and you're concentrating on your character, on your part, on the scene, but you don't see it in your mind's eye like he does, David Lean does, because obviously he's a director and he's sitting as a spectator when we're doing it. But to see the picture, once they start putting the sound, and then you see now it's getting better. And then they put the music on, and it gets much better. And you watch better. that? You know, and so I watch you that in stages like that. Does it make you want to be a director someday? Yes. I think it's a natural thing for an actor to desire to be a director. I don't say that they have to be good directors, but it's a natural thing because directing is like acting all the parts. You know, it's playing all the parts through different people. It's telling the other actors. All the actors. That's wanted. right. And you not only that, but you can you, you can be the you can act all the parts act, really right. and be I the can boss. Also act the girls' parts. <laughs> Is that what your secret ambition? But no, no, it has not. But, one but can what have you been doing socially? Never mind all the business now. You, you know, who'd you go out with when I you were in Hollywood? Had any social life? Oh, I met uh, um, Soraya. You know. Yes. And Is this the first time? Went yes. And you would be a good combination. <laughs> yes, we sort of. Half oriental, both yeah, of us. Yeah. That makes one whole. <laughs> oriental, two halves. And she was, she was a delightful person. I didn't know her, and uh, there was a party in her honor, so I met her there, and then we had dinner one evening. It's absolutely delightful. And how about here in New York, am I? I haven't any time for any social life, really. You got to bed late last night. I got to bed last night. I went to dinner at a nice place. And, and then we went and had a drink somewhere. By the time and you... By the time I got back home, it was very late, because I was on, I was doing a, a television show last night, which ended quite late. So I... I you were on Johnny Carson's show last night. I was on Johnny Carson's right. last night. Oh, and so I only got away very late. By the time I had dinner, and had went somewhere. Oh, well, you go from city to city. I mean, you have been on this tour. So do you remember any of the people who interviewed you? Did you remember me? Oh, yes, sir. You better say it. I remember, I always remember all the people if I meet them again in the same country. What I find it, because I meet lots of people, but if I meet somebody in Madrid, say, and then a year later meet that same person in New York, I don't recognize them. It's difficult, out of context. You know, I if know. I meet them again in Madrid, I, I'll recognize them. I know, and I think they want us to end this interview because yeah. there are other people waiting. I mean, Omar Sharif, I'm going to see the film tomorrow night. Good luck. Thank I hear Dr. Zimbago is a pretty wonderful film. Thank you, Thank you. <laughs> I don't know whether to call you Omar or a doctor. He's called me Omar. What happens when somebody is a, a film star in Egypt? 20 movies, the number one matinee idol of Egypt, and then with three movies, starting with Lawrence of Arabia and the Yellow Rose Royce, and then all of a sudden you're an international film star. Well, it's, it's a wonderful feeling. You're, you need, first of all, a lot of luck. You need to get a picture like Lawrence of Arabia, such an attractive character to the, to the audience it was. And you know, it, it's no use even having a wonderful part in a picture that's not going to be successful. Uh, you, 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 it's, it's, it won't be easy to, to uh, be quickly uh, to, to be quickly recognized and quickly successful if the picture is not successful. The important thing is to be in a successful picture for a start. It's such a, a lucky thing, really. Well, what's your emotion then when all of a sudden you're called and someone says, "We would like you to play." the title role in probably the most important motion picture in the last three or four years. Yes, I'll tell you what happened to me is that I was struck absolutely speechless and I, I got a sort of shaking fit because I couldn't really believe it because I wanted to be in this film. And when I heard that David Dean was making it, I, I got myself the book and read it and looked for a part for myself. It never occurred to me that they would ask me to play Dr. Jumbo. So I said, now what character can I play in this film? 
and I found myself a part and I called my agent and I said, try and hustle me in, you know, in the picture. And in fact, this is the part that Tom Courtney plays in the film. Very brilliant. And I was waiting for the answer on this, this conniving thing that I had done to get this part. And suddenly I get a phone call. I'm in Belgrade, Yugoslavia. And, um, and it's David Dean and he says, would you consider playing the title role? And I said, what title role, David? He said, Dr. Shabani. And I put the phone down and I just couldn't make any reply. Yeah, yeah, I couldn't. This is the feeling I had, you know, and I got... Well, that, that was your emotion as an actor. Now, what was your emotion as a father when you worked with your son on the set in the uh, early, early stages, Dr. Well, it's a terrifying thing because I want my son to be an actor eventually. But a child, it's so difficult for a child really to act in front of the camera because what it requires really is a lot of concentration and to be able to focus on things. And children can't do that, you know, they're always looking away and they wonder why they're being made to stand on, on one spot for such a long time. And I was terribly nervous because they're sitting behind the camera. It's as if you're laying an egg all the time, you know, you go, come on, you want the words to come out. He was a very good actor. He was wonderful, yes. I was very pleased. Do you ever feel that now all of a sudden, in a relatively short span, as an international star, that with the title role of Dr. Zhivago, and if the movie is as successful as everyone anticipates it will be, that you might have reached your peak, that there will never be another role as big or as demanding or as important for you? Yes, it, it, it's very difficult. Uh, where do you go from there? You're quite right. But there are other types. Hmm. Of, in other words, Dr. Zhivago is a great picture, but you can't compare it to a good comedy. You know, that's another type, which is still another peak to reach, do you see? Have you ever been to Philadelphia? Yes, I was there for about 24 hours. I've heard people say they've been to Philadelphia for two weeks one day. What? But one day felt, felt like two weeks. Oh, uh, well, I, I, you know, I was on, uh, I, was, well, I was, I was there for Lawrence of Arabia, sort of promotion thing. And all I saw really was the interior of television studios and radio shows. There was one show at midnight, which I went to, I remember that. And I had a marvelous meal at the uh, bookbinders of okay. that, which I think is wonderful. You come back, we'll show you the town. Thank you very much. Omar Sharif, Dr. Zhivago, thank you. Thank you. We'll be back with more on Tenor on Town in a minute. Say, uh, you know, I've, I've, I've never been to Cairo before, but this must be Cairo because <laughs> you're an Egyptian, right? Yes. And this is Omar Sharif, and we're gathered here in, not in Cairo, but in uh, New York City. And there must be a reason we're here. Let's see. Uh, you're opening a restaurant. Uh, Omar Khayyam. Yeah, Omar Khayyam. A great, a great food. must be one, yeah. They've always got an Omar Khayyam restaurant everywhere. What does Omar Khayyam mean? It's the name of this person. Look for this we have a false star. We have a little jam. Relax the star. All these gems. Star. Uh, <coughs> we are. We're on our way, huh? All right. Let me see now. You know what I'd like to do? I'd like to go to a nice restaurant, say an Egyptian one now. This is Omar Sharif, and he is Egyptian. Do you know of any good Egyptian restaurants in the United States? Well, I, I'm sure every every city you go to, there's always a restaurant. It's always called Omar Khayyam, and they've always got shish kebab. Yeah, yeah shish kebab and mulligan stew and Welsh pancakes. <laughs> and, and it's always run by an Irishman. Welsh rabbit. Yeah, Welsh rabbit, <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, an amazing thing, we were just sitting here and uh, Omar said to me, uh, you must be Irish, and I said, no, Welsh, and you started to speak to me in Welsh. Well, I said the only thing I know, which is Shudihi Kariat. What does that mean? Which means, uh, how are you, my love, or something. <laughs> That'll go over great. I'm hastened in Pennsylvania, you know, I can say Borada, which is uh, good morning, and then I'm shot for the day there. Well, what brings you to this noble city of New York? Well, we have uh, this small film that's opening tomorrow in New York. Dr. Kildare. Dr. Uh, something. Dr. I can never pronounce it. I can't pronounce it. No, no one can. Shugav. 
difficult. Well, it starts off with a Z. If you see anything, yeah. it starts with a Dr. Z. You want to go see it. Well, what role do you play in it? Well, I play Dr. Zhivago himself in person. Oh, why? With why stethoscope it? and all. Uh, and this was shot in the uh, noble yes. country of Spain? Yes. And well, where does it take place? In Russia, in Moscow, in Siberia, in the Urals, all over. Did you have to Lots learn any snow. Russian? No, I had to. I had to learn how to bear the cold. And if you can imagine a poor, bewildered Egyptian walking knee deep in snow, you've got a pretty good image of what it looked like. That'd be wild indeed. Well, how did this poor little Egyptian get into the snow? What was the trail that led you down the road? To this? Well, we had to have snow for a large part of the picture because most of it, a lot of it, happens during the winter in Siberia. You know, and we had to have enormous expanses, of endless steps of snow. But go, going back beyond that, back to when you were just a boy in Egypt, how did yeah. you end up in this? Uh, well, I was a boy. Oh, I, I was a boy. You know, in, in every school you have a little boy who organizes the school plays and the school productions and the variety shows for the other kids. That was me. And I want to be an actor. And uh, I was very lucky. I immediately had an opportunity when I finished school to make a picture which was very successful. And I, and I went on from there. Just, just that easy, right? It was all very easy, very well, look, fortunate. Looking in the crystal ball here, what do you see in the future? Well, where do you go from, you know, after having made a thing like Dr. Shabago? It's rather difficult to find things, and I find myself terribly worried. I'm afraid I'm going to make some terrible mistake now, mm -hmm. and I can't make up my mind about the thing I want to do next. Omar, you know, I just heard the telephone ring in the background, and I think that's a friend of mine who wants to talk to the two of us about opening up a little uh, Egyptian restaurant. Will you join me? Sure. All right, we'll go see Dr. I'll Shalago cook. first, right. and then we'll go down. You can cook, and I'll stand out in front and be the head waiter. Okay. No, we better do it the other way. All right. Omar Sharif, thanks, thanks for dropping by. Well, that's All right. fair. Yeah. That piece of chat. Thank you. Thank you very much. Pay your tax to the Those of you looking in have seen this young fellow on our show a couple of times in the last month and since we last talked to him. I would imagine he's covered quite a bit of America uh, promoting his new picture that opens here in New York tomorrow night, Dr. Zhivago. Omar Sharif, uh, by now, are you getting a little weary of traveling around the United States? I'm a little bit tired, but there's such an amount of excitement going, you know, about the, the picture opening tomorrow, and it's keeping me excited, and it's keeping me uh, interested and enthusiastic, and so it, I don't feel so tired after all. Do you find, do you find as, as the big night draws nearer that you're, you're becoming more... Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I'm in a terrible state of nerves because I haven't seen the film, you see. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to see it for the first time on the opening night. And, and you know, an opening night is a, is a nerve-breaking thing anyway. But with seeing a picture for the first time, not knowing how you've done, really, is yeah. terrifying. And this, this, this is uh, all new to me because I, I would imagine that the star of the picture would be given some privileges of actually seeing it before the general public. Oh, but no one has. You see, the picture was only completed last night. I mean, it only came into New York last night. They just finished putting it together. It's very, very close. Well, I, I certainly hope that uh, David Lean uh, does as well in his directing of all of you great actors in this picture as he did with, well, your picture that you did with him, uh, Lawrence, Lawrence of Arabia, and uh, his other picture, Bridge on the River Quas. Uh, you have all the ingredients of a, a great picture, and I wish you the best, and I, I, I think it's going to be a great one. Thank you, Ed. I hope so, so much. I hope so, too. Okay. And uh, I hope all the critics like it. Thank you for talking with us, uh, Mr. Sharif, and uh, I hope to see you again soon. Thank you. Right, thank you. I just wanted that. Uh, Gerald Prattley, CBC, Detroit. Thank you. Mr. Sharif, uh, after I spoke to you in Madrid, where you were on location for Dr. Zhivago, did you travel anywhere else? to film any of the scenes? Yes, we had to go, in fact, you came in February, yes. if I remember, and we had to go to uh, Finland 
for uh, uh, about three weeks because what actually happened is we were promised a lot of snow in this certain town in the north of Spain where we were making a picture and we didn't get the promised snow and we needed quite a large barren uh, expanse of, of snow to, to something to look like the steppes of Siberia and we couldn't get it in Spain so we had to all go to Finland for three weeks right on the on the Russian border as a matter of fact and uh, we did a, a bit of shooting there for all these scenes that require endless horizons of snow. That was the closest that Dr. Jivago ever got to home wasn't it? Yes it was. <laughs> I suppose this is rather a foolish question but uh, was there ever any consideration given or attempts made to film in Russia? No, because you see, the, the novel is banned in Russia and, and one assumed that it was not going to be possible for them to allow you to shoot the picture of that novel there. And you know, they prevented Boris Pasternak from uh, accepting, accepting the Nobel Prize. And so we, we, David Lee knew that they weren't going to give him permission and he went on a long trek with his car to find a, a suitable location. And the trouble with the northern countries is that you need to shoot in winter for the snow. And the days are very short. See, they've got four hours of daylight in most of these northern countries, which would be ideal otherwise. And it's not possible to make a film under those conditions. I understand, Mr. Sharif, that at one time David Lean was considering filming in Canada. Yes, he was. In fact, he went to Canada and uh, looked at the locations. But finally, he found everything he needed in Spain, really. Because he had some spring scenes. The film goes through the four seasons. And he had to shoot it in that, uh, during those seasons. He didn't want to fake spring or fake autumn for them. Your career has been outstanding since the time you began in films, Mr. Sharif, have you? What do you uh, subscribe, uh, what do you uh, attribute this to? The fact that you have chosen your parts very carefully? No, no. I think this is, a, it is an element of luck involved, which is very important in an actor's career. I started with a, with a wonderful thing, and this is the most important thing. I think the first time the people recognize you and you know, you form a sort of image. You're associated, if you're associated with a great picture like Lawrence of Arabia and a marvelous character like the, the character I portrayed in Lawrence of Arabia, you're, you're well on your way to uh, a success. And then I had this other opportunity now when David Dean required me to play this, show, uh, this, uh, this part in this picture, which is a, a dream part for any actor. Yet many unknown actors have had uh, good opportunities in their first film, and yet, in spite of the praise and their success, we've not heard from them again. Well, um, that all depends on what you do with your opportunities as well, and if you keep getting more chances. You know, sometimes you get this one opportunity, and then you form a sort, sort of image that people want to stereotype, uh, to, to keep you in. You know, when I did Lawrence of Arabia, it was successful. They kept offering me to play the desert hawk every time, you know, and I kept turning that down. And they, people didn't conceive of casting me, say, to play Dr. Chivago, except that David Dean knew me well enough to know that I could do that. Did you find it a difficult character? Chivago? Yes. Terribly difficult.